That's the notice that your lordships mothers read, 21st of June, dated 21st of June, I mean, uh, received on 22nd of June at 11.30 a.m., but dated 21st June. Eknath Sindhi wrote to the deputy speaker communi communi communicating his appointment as leader. So now, mothers, the legislative party or a majority of the legislative party can decide who they're going to be the leader of the party in the house, of the party, sitting in Assam. Now, mothers, prior to this, prior to the passing of this, this judicial order, mothers, all that happened was, was happening outside of Bombay, outside of Maharashtra, in a state in the northeast. And by, by whom? By these legis members of the Legislative Assembly, that's all. There was no party in sight. There was no meeting of any party. There was nobody called for a meeting of the party. And these are undisputed facts, Mother. These are not disputed facts. Can the 10th schedule countenance a situation where, because of whatever reasons, Mother, we don't want to go into it, a majority or even a minority of MLAs are just, Mother, they let's forget the majority, Mother. Supposing a minority. We don't sometimes need the majority to topple a government. You would only need a minority. Supposing it's a minority, mother, and the minority outside the state of Maharashtra says, I have formed. I am the political party. And then a judicial order is passed, mother, on a disqualification petition. Then no, no, no. If a petition is filed, you can file your reply after 10, 15 days, mothers. In the meantime, the minority gets in touch, mothers, with the other party, topples the government, a new chief minister is appointed. Can you ever imagine that the 10th schedule would allow that? Can it ever be countenanced, mothers? This is harakiri. This is legislative harakiri. Political harakiri. And you can't interpret the 10th schedule, mothers, in this particular fashion to allow an elected government to fall. That's why I said it is judicial orders of this court that resulted in this. Then, mothers, 27th of June, as several other members of the SSLP had also openly indulged in anti party activity. Now, can anybody say, mothers, that this is not anti party or this is not giving up membership of the party? One of, you, one of you sitting there say that we, that we are forming a new party called Shivsana Balasab. And you are sitting in a state ruled by the opposite, ruled by a party, Malas, which was in the opposition. First you go to Gujarat, then you go to Assam. There is no dispute on that. These actions per se amount to giving up membership of the party, apart from the fact that you don't attend the meeting on 21st, 22nd of June. So what is the speaker going to decide? What can he decide? Given these facts. Then 28th of June, Marat, late in the evening, the leader of opposition in the state of Maharashtra, Devendra Fadnes, went to meet the governor and requested him to hold a floor test. After the stay. That's where the role of the governor comes in. On 28th of June, immediately after meeting the Vindra Fadnavis and with utmost haste, the governor sent a communication dated 28th of June, though received in the early hours of 29th of June to the then chief minister, directing him to face a floor test in the house on the very next day, 30th of June. It is relevant to note that the honorable governor did not even attempt to ascertain from the chief minister whether he enjoyed the majority of the house. On 28th of June, the governor, by way of a separate communication dated 28th of June, which was received in the early hours, directed the latter to forthwith, directed the latter to forthwith on 30th June to convene the assembly and hold a floor test. 29th of June, Sunil Prabhu filed a writ petition before this honorable court seeking a stay. So, Malas, we said, please stay the matter. Please don't allow this to happen. Of the directions of the floor test in view of the fact that the disqualification petition of 42 MLAs under the 10th schedule were pending. By order dated 29th of June, in writ petition so and so, this court was pleased to direct as follows. 
having given our thoughtful consideration to the rival submissions, we do not find any ground to stay convening of the special session of the Maharashtra Assembly. Oh. Vidhan Sabha, on 30th June, tomorrow at 11 a.m., and with the only agenda of a trust vote. So therefore, you give legitimacy to those against whom disqualification petitions are pending, and such legitimacy that they are able to topple the government by colluding with another party, which is in opposition in that very state. That's the effect of the judicial order. So first, stay the proceeding before the deputy speaker, then allow another, this collusion, and get an elected government mullah set uh, toppled. What used to be Malad's, the misuse of 357 has now been substituted by the misuse of the 10th schedule. 356 was now misuse of the 10th schedule. And this, the proceeding of the trust vote to be convened on 30th of June shall be subject to the final outcome of the instant petition. That's another interesting thing with us. Proceeding of the trust vote shall be subject to the final outcome of the instant petition as well as the writ petitions referred to above. So therefore, Malaz, every action of the governor resulting in a new government having been formed is subject to your lordship's decision in these petitions. So you cannot give it the color and clothe it with legality because the judicial order itself says that it's subject to. So you cannot say now the trust vote has happened, now a chief minister has been installed, now a government is in place, now you can't do a thing about it. The special session of Maharashtra Vidhan Sabha shall be conducted in accordance with the directions that continue contained in the communication dated through 28th of June of the governor of Maharashtra. Then 29 June Chief Minister Udav Thakre resigned. Because he knows the writing was on the wall, having given legitimacy to those who... At around, then 30th of June at around 3 p.m., Eknath Shindi and Devendra Fadnasis met the governor and staked claim to form the government. This is also anti-party activity. No evidence is required on this. Then 30th of June, the governor, without taking into account the fact that the membership of Eknath Shindi itself was in dispute, here again the question of the governor comes in, mother, is in dispute. In, in, in the imminent disqualification petition pending against him, swore Shri Eknath Sinde in as, the, in as the Chief Minister and Devinder Fadnavis as the Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra, the Honorable Governor thereafter directed Eknath Sinde to prove his majority on the floor of the House. We knew that he, everybody knows that he would have the majority thus. You can fool the Constitution but not the arithmetic mother. Then the governor, without taking into account the fact that the members, and I've read that, then 30th of June, due to their anti party activities, with unquest, which unquestionably amounted to relinquishing membership of the Shiv Sena political party, Shri Sinde, Tanaji Savant, Uday Samant, Samant, and Gulab Rao Patil were removed from their positions in the organizational setup of the party by the undisputed president of the Shiv Sena, Shri Ulap. Well, let's just note here. No meeting of any political party took place at the instance of Eknath Shinde. And you will see that tomorrow in the, in the petition before the, before the election commission, that alleged meeting, alleged meeting, which I'll show is bogus, happened to have taken place on 18th July. After all this was over. And the petition for getting the symbol was filed on the 19th July, on the very next day. Then, Malaj, one second, one second. Yeah, I'll take it. Then, Malaj, one first of I'm sorry, first of July, 2022, Shiv Sena Secretary sent a letter to the Election Commission 
intimating the authority regarding the removal of Eknath Shinde from the positions of Shiv Sena and change in the organizational setup of Shiv Sena thereto. Also, by the separate letter, the Shiv Sena Secretary intimated the ECI regarding the removal of Tanaji Savant and Uday Savant from the organizational position of Shiv Sena. Similarly, the Shiv Sena Secretary sent another letter to the Election Commission of India intimating the authority regarding the removal of Gurab Law Party from the organizational position of Shiv Sena. On 1st of July, an application for directions, IA such and such, was filed by Sunil Prabhu in the present rich petition seeking an interim order suspending the delinquent MLAs against whom disqualification petitions have been filed till the final adjudication of the 10 scheduled proceedings. The said application was mentioned before this court for urgent interim hearing listing, wherein this honorable court directed to list the application along with the writ petition on 11th of July. Then 2nd of July, the Principal Secretary Maharashtra Legislative Part Assembly circulated working order for conducting election to the Office of Speaker on 3rd of July. The said agenda showed that the name of Rahul Narvekar was proposed by the BJP MLA and the name of Ranjan Prabhar Salvi was proposed by Shiv Sena. So, this uh, Rahul Narvekar was proposed by a BJP MLA because he happened to be a member of the BJP. Then, 2nd of July, Sunil Prabhu, acting as chief whip, issued a whip. Now, till that day, Sunil Prabhu is still the whip. Acting as chief whip of SSLP, issued whip to the members of SSLP regarding the election of the speaker, scheduled on 3rd of July. All the party members were asked to remain present in the assembly and vote for the Shiv Sena candidate, Ranjan, Rajan Salvi. Sunil Prabhu issued a further whip to the members of SSLP regarding confidence motion scheduled, scheduled on 4th of July. All the party members were asked to remain present in the assembly until the end of the session and vote against the confidence motion. 